still feel, as we start the second half, that a bag of four or five required from Pav for Fremantle to win. Umpire Jordan Bannister to get it underway. Former bomber player himself, along with the Blues. Tackle, and a Jonathan very, Griffin. very good umpire. Hey, he could give me head. He's been solid, Griffin. Yeah, he did have possession. Stepping into the number one ruck mantle with Sandy Linsado. I reckon he's done his job. And the two tags that we saw at the start of the game are there again at the start of this second quarter. Uh, the second half, excuse me. Main tries to run onto this and looking for one back inside. Got it to Crowley, back to Main. He loses a bit of ground, but now they get a look at a forward ball. Pavlich, Clark and Broughton and outmarked by Carlisle in the end. Gee, they're harsh on this play on this round. They yeah, hardly moved up the he line hardly, again, did he, yeah, Carlisle? I reckon they're really tightened up on it over the weekend, Move the umpires. Ball to centre wing, McFarlane and Hurley. Stanton a little careless and he attempts to move the ball on there. What was great about that ten mark nine, nine. by Carlisle? Thanks, he, Thanks, he's doing the job defensively this year, but he's not afraid as a defender to go for his marks. and. I think that's fantastic. The best defenders have always done that. Matthew Scarlett does it. Brian Lake's one of the best at doing it. And good to see Carlisle backing himself in close to the Fremantle goal line, going for his marks. Oh, Paddy, that's it. Silvani. A more measured start to the second half, BT. It's which which came out of the different blocks. already, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you get the feeling that we might get this one closed in. Scoring restricted a bit more. It started at the most cracking pace just about seen all year. Who's initiating that, Dars? I think it favours Ross Lyon. I think it's his natural style. I think he prefers to get into an arm wrestle. He'd love just to pick it back, maybe get it to within a goal at three-quarter time, get the crowd factor into it here at Subiaco and see if he can just put enough uh, pressure in the minds of the Bombers players. Dempsey to Hooker had a little bit too much on it. And Hooker unable to... By the sounds of it, boys, Freo have obviously tried to open up the game, play a different style of footy in the first half of the of the game. Now going back to what we expected from them early on, that's keep possession of the ball, just control the tempo of the game and slow the game down so that Essendon can't move the ball as quick. Bit of a Justin Bieber about him, that boundary umpire that threw it back in just then. He's uh, threw it in about eight metres as well, which yeah. uh, is not Thanks, really... He's got, got, just, got Justin's strength. <laughs> His guns are about the size of Bieber's. Oh, now, come on. There he is, Bieber boy. <laughs> It's and all about timing, though, the boundary throwing. There's Bannister, boy. Mzungu through traffic to Pav. There's Clancy Pierce, leaves it for the skipper. Pavlich trying to thread the needle. Magnificent ball by the big man Pavlich to get it through that little gap and find Broughton was magnificent. He had half a fumble, the skipper, at the first uh, contest. He, he knew that he wouldn't make a second mistake, and that is such great... Vision, awareness, understanding of uh, how to play the game. And then the kick, as you said, BT, was just perfect. Only kicked the one goal this year. Only has the 10 career goals, Greg Broughton, from his 65 games. Played all of the night up at this end of the ground. And here he is with a 45-degree angle shot. There it is. Good-looking kick. Needs to hold its line, and it has. Fremantle with a good second-half start. Well, it was set up by Matthew Pavlich. He is obviously the key if Fremantle can win this game. He won the game in Melbourne a few weeks ago against Richmond with a six-goal haul. And every time he gets the football, he just has that little bit more poise and class than most other players on the ground. Good players always look like they have more time. And Pavlich was good enough and poised enough to be able to find Broughton on the lead. So, within eight points now here, the Fremantle Dockers. Broughton kicks his first goal of the game, and we believe possible injury news with Hurley as well. We're just going to see if we can capture any of that as both teams tonight have kicked five goals straight oh, from set shots, so perfect here tonight. Yeah, Mike Hurley leaving the back. ground there, as you can see, going down into the Essendon rooms. Doesn't look too serious, moving well. He's running off the ground without uh, any uh, obvious oh, impediment, so let's hope that it's just something quick and he's back out there. He hasn't mm. been involved in any play yet, so it's interesting. The magnet Barlow working it forward. Here's Mzungu. Meyer's been good. 
Risky handball. Pavlich looks up and about in this half as well. Bomber's got some numbers here. Hardingham missed the first attempt. Hook up. On to Hibbard. And was that out of bounds on the fall off the leg of Stanton? I don't think so. Maybe Michael Hurley just needs to go to the men's room. Possibly, Richard. Not unheard of. It's actually, it's a possibility. It does happen in your how many 280 odd games? Did it ever happen to you, Richard? Does? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, players are drinking sometimes about eight litres of Powerade before a game. Griffin Long, Hooker couldn't mark. Probably should have taken it. The strength of Pavlich, but Fletcher catches up with him. Bombers out of the loop. Advantage paid here. Dempsey a little ball inside to his mate Jetta. Crowd not happy with Leroy Jetta. They thought he took a bit of a dive in the second quarter, but our replay suggested it was a decent punch in the face from uh, Adam McPhee. Absolutely. The ball back inside to Remus. Just got it in front of Crozier. There's Heppel. The hair looking as loose as ever from Dyson Heppel. Good looking ball, great hands, Cramery turns around on the point of the square, 70 out, a genuine one-on-one, -on -one. Paddy and McFarlane offhand, Subin, didn't let it hit the deck, beautifully done from Nick Subin, and that kick. His kick is magnificent. That was great, he worked harder than anyone else to get back front and square, and crumb that ball, and helped out his defence. Oh, DeBoer felt the pressure from behind, felt the need to get rid of it quicker than he should have. Is Griffin gives Hill a chance here? He should mark in front. Spoiled Clancy able to pick it up. The bend around the body looking for Broughton. Fletcher winning the race back, but he's now under pressure. Just was able to partially keep his footing. And now Hardingham under Monday pressure keeps it alive. Dangerous thing to deal. Locking Neil got it back to Clancy Pierce. Too much hook, Clancy. Too much hook. And Hibbert couldn't keep it alive. She nearly kept it in then, Hibbert. That play from Subin was fantastic down back to have the poise then to kick it outside his own defensive 50 and hit a target, set up that scoring attack. Another contest here. Hibbertson able to bowl his man over lower, got it off to the ball. DeBoer set sail for home, gets a really good look. Fremantle back within two points. Perfect start in the second half for the Fremantle Dockers. They've slowed the game down, restricting the run of Essendon, and they've kicked the first two goals. De Boer continuing his very, very good form. Up to 16 disposals, and that goal right then, as BT just pointed out, back to a two point margin. have another look at the goal here and it was a great finish but that's the seven inside 50s to one this quarter they've come out full of running the Fremantle Dockers scores nearly back level now this is just a great game of footy they're not going to go away tonight the Dockers indeed it is Richo as you say back within two points Griffin did he dispose of it correctly by hand or foot the umpire said knocked out in the tackle Hibbert Looking for perfection with Heppel, couldn't get it. Ibbotson. Boys, Michael Hurley back from the change rooms. Looks to have just got his wrist or hand retaped. So it doesn't look to be too bad. Oh, Carlisle backing back into the oncoming traffic Gee, of Pavlich. That's what I'm talking about, BT. He goes for his marks. That time going back into Pav, who was coming out on the lead. He is one of the most improved tall defenders in the competition this year. They need to get more out of this man, though, BT. Paddy Wright has got the footy. That's just disposal number seven. Has had no influence in this game. Too important a player to not be involved at all. Remus into Monfries. Monfries around the corner. Here's Hill. Got back to help McFarlane. Got Olio there who's kicked a couple in this game. And Jakey Carlisle, magnificent. EC Hurley, Hardingham and Melksham. And of course that man on the right there. That's the weapon. The weapon. Boys up, guns clear! Responsible for strength and conditioning. And here's Monfries. Looking for Heppel to bore. 
Sneaky little one from Neil to lower. Now Main. Didn't panic. Lower's got a lot of traffic to deal with here. Did it well and had great eyes into the middle of the ball. Didn't get the body contact that he'd hoped then. Now on to Pavlic. Pavlic can go further afield here. Magnificent kick, Broughton marks. Well, that was great play by Broughton. All of the rest of the Fremantle forwards pushed right up the ground over halfway, but Broughton didn't. He wanted to isolate Dustin Fletcher and keep him last man in the line. Fletch tried to anticipate the play and came off of Broughton, and that's how he got that gap going back towards goal. You can see the ball in the marking attempt trying to feel the leg and the back of the opponent in front. Didn't get him, that's why I think he didn't take the mark. But now Broughton, from almost directly in front, good grip on the ball. This to put Fremantle in front. Have a look at the purple haze they're up and about. A brilliant response here from the Dockers. First three goals of the second half, and they get the lead back. Crowd gets involved. We can see a sea of purple here. Patterson Stadium, Subiaco. I reckon they've changed the context of the way the game's been played. Yeah, they've kicked the goals, but none of that line-breaking run that Essendon have been able to deliver in the first half. They've been able to slow it down a touch, and their own rebound work has been sensational. Brilliant response here from the Dockers. Certainly is, and there's no doubt, Darcy, it's been a tactic. You mentioned it early. They had Zach Clark taking Dustin Fletcher deep into his uh, own defence. Well, this quarter, he's on Broughton, and Broughton's kicked those two goals. Done it really well, keeping Fletch the last man in the line. Back in the middle of the ground, Paddy Ryder to Watson. Clancy, Pierce in there, lower again. Little handball under pressure now. Watson steps to the line. Fremantle by four points. Ball inside 50. Cramery, a little bit of speed. Couldn't control it. Now Watson. Crichton's got him. Gee, bit of a flick pass or a throw. I'm not sure which one. Barlow, the magnet man. Now Pavlic again. Up they fly. Knocked away by Hooker. Carlisle bumped off the ball. The man of the moment, Broughton. Got a ball wide. Barlow gathers. Got him, Hooker. Wrapped him up in the tackle. Threw him to ground and this will be a ball up. Have kicked the ball last three goals out. of the game, the Fremantle Dockers. Cramery just being checked there. Fremantle's end of the ground. Clancy Pierce trying to find a way through. All of a sudden, it's back to the Bombers. They need their gun players to respond. There's Joe Watson who's uh, been involved and effective. He's had 15 disposals, but Ryan Crowley has taken away that real good clearance work that he normally delivers of just getting the matchups they want here all of a sudden, Fremantle. Hurley, did he have it? I don't think so. McFarlane infringing there. Howell out the back. Good ball to Hocking. Hocking looks to the wing and sees the white-booted Reamers. Used to wear purple and green ones. Just the white one, says James Hurdle do. Silvani backing back into the slot. Poor kick from him, though, to Crichton. Worked it out nicely, found Neil, and now McFarlane back to Neil. Half back here for the Dockers. Subin. Not panicking with the ball. Frio, I like their style. Broughton couldn't get it, Howlett off hands, back to Heppel. Beautiful vision by Heppel to find Hibbert. Hibbert over the top to Paddy. The give and go comes back to Job from 50 with a low ball to Monfries. Monfries has taken the mark, 20 out, difficult angle. Yeah, brilliant response from the skipper, Job Watson. A great play from Ryder. It was the right option, get him involved. Such a complete player now. Joe Watson is Plays Monfries. on, kick around the body, just hurried it a little, Monfries. Just got the... Just got it in the middle of the ball. So just a little bit of composure. You see the likes of the Hawthorne team do that, and they take their time, and they, sit, they think through it. He sort of rushed that. Most players are pretty good at it now, but he yeah. normally is, Monfries. Gee, I reckon Paddy might have had hands in the back of his opposite number there. Zach! And he's just off tonight. Zach! Paddy Ryder. Zach! He's had a bit of a trim with the Zach hair. Clark! He's sharpened that up a bit, Dars, but... 
Jack's got to come all the way back to receive this free at half back, basically. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the third. Bye Fremantle on. have kicked all three goals in this quarter. Lead it by four. McPhee. On his non-preferred side, De Boer. Crowley off hands magnificently. Bang, it's already up the forward end. Hands in the back of Maine. I saw that against Kyle Hardingham. Maine wants it. Well, he's got Pav down there. It looks really dangerous. And he's got a run and jump of it. Here comes Pav over the back. He's got it. He was just in a great spot, BT. And you could see Carl Hooker shaking his head, but he didn't have body contact. And he looked up, he went, you give Pav five metres of space, which show that is just so dangerous, and he delivered. I reckon a Ford, a gun Ford like Matty Pavlich, he would have been happy when Hooker's in front of him like that. I used to, you, you love it as a Ford when the defenders get in front of you and you shouldn't give him that sort of space. Eight marks for the skipper. Pavlich comes in to convert here, kick the first goal of the game for a 10-point Fremantle lead to send his place. Psycho! Pavlich wow. with his second goal, Das. Just starting on Rebel here for the Bombers. Four in a row to start the second half for the Fremantle Dockers. Yeah, Matty Pavlich, you see Hooker there. He just got lost. He got in front of him. He lost touch on Pavlich. And he was all at sea with the ball coming over his head. Now, we saw the hands in the back from Hardingham, but should Pavlich, seconds later, have been pinged as well? Yes, he should have. Well, to the letter of the law, yeah, he should have. Absolutely. We've seen less paid, Richo. Ibbotson strolls through. Free kick against Dempsey, he wonders why. Mundy told to give it back, and Courtney not happy. Jonathan Griffin kicks another long ball. All the big hitters are there. Zach Clark flew without success. Heppel to Stanton and now Melksham back to Stanton. Under pressure from Mazungu. Made him work. Well done, Crichton. Magnificent to Mazungu. Onto the magnet man, Barlow. Picks it up. Can he control it? Oh, he fell over his own feet in the end. And the ball went out of bounds. He's just had a melt down there. Poor old Michael Barlow. I'll tell you what, Brent Stan, you've got to be careful. He called for the footy in a position where he shouldn't have got it. Mazunga was closing space. You've got to, even though you want the footy as badly as Stanton does, your responsibility is to call for it when you're in the right position. Fletcher, clever little loan behind through the goals. I think sometimes you get in that mindset, Brent Stanton's getting tagged. He demands a footy, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. If you're running away from goal and your tag is a metre away, that ain't the time to get it. you got to push forward and earn it when it's the right time to win it. Good kicking, isn't it? 12-3 to 10-4. Fletcher sees Hill and Cramery as targets that he likes. Really no great contest there. De Boer says, just give me a go at it. Off to Johnson, handball smothered. Well done, Cramery. Clancy, Pierce. great control to McPhee. High ball on the head of Mundy. Heppel, Barlow, somehow to De Boer, searching for space and time for Griffin. Able to launch another ball forward. They're all in there, ready to go. Tried to mark it, Hardingham. Hibbert did well to force it out to the advantage of Hill. Melksham's under enormous pressure. Gee, they're hunting them now. Look at them. Oh, this is great pressure. Haven't seen this for a while. Of Frio, Hocking. Oh, I thought it was good use Ooh. of the body. Right on it, right on it! Jeez, I was with you, BT. I thought that he played that really well, my first glance, but the free kick has gone Clancy Pierce's way. Short ball to Maine is... Right on it! Go. Is he within distance here? You got your angle. Well, last week, they had a record for tackles, three men, or a club record. And they're starting to up the ante now. They didn't lay any tackles in that little patch, but the pressure and the pressure acts forced the turnover. 4 1 Frio to no score Essendon in this quarter as we're about to enter red time at the 20 minute mark. Maine has kicked three goals. This one will be from just outside the arc. It's a good ball with great direction. 
falls short by a metre. Very serious goal umpire there, <laughs> giving that behind. He's doing his job well. Oh, he's very serious about his job. Richo. Now, as you say, the pressure is mounting. They just can't seem to get it out of this end, the Bombers. Yeah, well, they had 118 tackles against Richmond last start. Handball to hooker. Stanton through centre-half back, just hoist it long in a hurry. Remus didn't punch from behind, he went the mark, and he's really disappointed with himself there. That's what I'm talking about again with Stanton. He just screams to the footy, give it to me, with no concept of what's around him. He was under enormous pressure. All he could do was hook it blindly and a floating kick to the forward line. You're not helping your team doing that. Better off not getting it. Run and protect. Great kick by Mundy. Surely the pavelator is too far out here. I reckon he inside wants to go the barrel, but team discipline says no. Play on, play on. Just trying to get a little iffy one over the top. Dempsey is mauled. Crowley went without it. Now Jake Melksham sees Paddy wide and Johnson getting back to keep him honest. Couldn't stop Paddy though. Ryder into the middle. That was a kick that was never on, I reckon. Ibbotson was always making ground kick. Mazungu went for the low ball to Maine. Turns his man around in Carlisle. Got Fletcher at the back. Relieving handball to Carlisle. This is where they can't get that breakthrough run, as Richo is pointing out. It's their best opportunity to go coast to coast. The white-booted Remus. Here he is. Sends a long ball. Cramery bound. Great kick. Kyle Remus. Great kick. Great work rate from Stuart Cramery. Boys, Essendon need the run in their legs, and they brought their sub on Nathan Lovett-Murray. They've taken Angus Mon Monfries off. Gee. Well, that's their A-grade plan, isn't it? Yeah. Went in at half-back. Long clearing kick, fast hard run, get out into open space. That's a big move getting Monfries off, but they've decided the fresh run. Well done to Fremantle. This start of the second quarter, they have just completely shut Essendon's run down. The feeling players like don't like putting the red vest on when you see a picture of Angus Monfries. That's certainly the worst thing you could do. Cramery plays on, gives himself a little more breathing space, and he's missed. She uh, on his left leg there it was. Probably just the opportunity to kick a drop punt. We know everyone, players now, love to go around, but he was... And he's done well with guiding yeah. it down tonight in a straight direction, hasn't he, from tougher position? It wasn't a, a tough angle on his left leg. Johnson, I'm sure that will even be called a set shot because he did play on. So, might well be a kick in motion. Fletcher's got a difficult one. Did he go at it or did he stay back? He had to go. This allows Broughton a bounce inside 50. Good ball, Maine. She, uh, that was terrific play by Broughton. Bounced over. Fletcher attacked the ball, which he had to do. He got a bad bounce. Broughton gathered it, had a bounce, and he looked up, and Maine was trying to work over Carlisle. He couldn't find space. There's the shocking bounce to Dustin Fletcher, but he didn't rush this kick. He waited for Maine to make the correct lead, double-backed on Carlisle, and that was a terrific bit of play. Chris Maine. There's a girlfriend called Kitty Cat, we believe. Unusual, I know. Hard to believe, I know. It's Truth. Serious. Here is Maine. 35 metres out, directly in front. And he's got it. Fremantle have kicked five in a row in the third. Well, he's a reliable shot for goal, Chris Maine. He's having a terrific night. Four goals, 17 possessions, seven marks. He's just had a great work ethic tonight. I love the way he's got back a couple of times and helped his defence. It's his best goal-kicking performance against the Bombers. Four goals straight. He doesn't need a lot of opportunities, Darcy. He doesn't miss many set shots. Yeah, really, really talented player. Great reaction from Maine on kicking his fourth goal and Fremantle by 17 points, their biggest lead of the game. Right now, as Monfries sits with the vest. Well, they've smashed them in the contested possession. Plus 10 this quarter. They've just been harder at it than the Bombers in this final third quarter. One. Five Fremantle goals in a row as Jetta around the corner. Was Hurley initiating the contact? Was he held by Silvani? The umpire said yes. Yeah, well played. Both arms, both arms are from Hurley. And he can't hold him on that. 
There's Jordan Bannister. I heard that. He was saying both arms around, telling Silvani you can't hold him like that. He's been fantastic, Jordan Bannister. There's Carlton play kicks. Three goals in the first quarter. Here it is. Held his body position well. Wrapped him around the neck. Correct decision. Yeah, fair call, Richo, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It just probably, there's just no need to wrap your arms around. He had him. He wasn't on the lead. Three first quarter goals. This is a huge kick for Hurley. Almost point blank range. 20 out. Drills the goal. Back within 11 points, the Bombers. Four goals to Hurley in a seesawing contest. Fremantle by 11. Michael Hurley in really good touch. This is his best effort for the year. Four goals here. Great shot of Patterson Stadium. Zach Clark out of the middle to Pavlich. Mark. It's a mark. It's a mark. Nah, he marked it, mate. So the clearance from Zach Clark. We spoke to Aaron Sandlands at half time. Paddy. Really exciting. And he gets his athleticism going, and there's the big star body in front of Hooker. He's looked dangerous all night tonight, Pav. Over, overtakes Doug Wade's games um, on 268 tonight, does the big fella Pav. He's just positioned himself perfectly at those centre bounces so that he's the man for a rush kick, and that's why he can take contested marks. For his third goal, bending left, and now a little bit right. Freeman will get another. Nice response from the skipper. The big Pav, good players. Get themselves in the right position. It's 12 goals now in his last three games. Really hitting a nice patch of form. And I love him playing where he is. 35, 40 metres out from goal. Super dangerous. Ah, the skipper getting it done. Three goals to him, but more importantly, his side up by 17. He's enjoying the moment there with Nick Lower. Yeah, that's 13 marks inside 50 in this game so far for Freeman on the most of the year. Love it, Murray can go all the way here. The sub, handball to Jenner. I reckon he should have. In the end, he had the open look at goal. And now, as a result of giving it off to Jetta, the turnover. McPhee to Pavlich. Just feels like he can beat anyone at the moment, Pav. And there's Howlett. They're just getting, just getting more numbers to the football, Freo. Ball into Ryder, got a back back into Mundy. Did well to mark. Jetta wanted it again. And I don't blame Paddy for not giving it this time. Morgan Paddy has a chance from here. And I yep. think he likes his, uh, his options as well. He's taking his time. Go back. It. Been very quiet tonight, been a disappointing night so far. An opportunity to kick a big goal. I reckon he can go the journey here and inside the last minute of the third, it's a must. Paddy Ryder must hoist the ball 55 metres. Kick on the way is an absolute ripper! A big banger! Paddy Ryder in the last 30 seconds of the third has got it back to 11. And that is what's great about footy. You can have a poor night and you can still impact the game in a positive manner. Love the way he did it. He summed it up. So I'm not going to muck around with a short ball. Take ownership of it. And a big, big bomb gets it back to 11 points. Crucial goal with 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Richard. Massive goal. Just gives them... We know they're a fast-finishing team. They had kicked nine goals in their last outing in the last quarter, so they're well within range, obviously, the Bombers. But that just gives them 
A little bit of momentum and confidence going into the break at three-quarter time. Just when we thought it was going to be a low-scoring affair, 11 goals collectively kicked in the first, seven in the second, and already eight in the third. And the Bombers a chance to score again in the last 20 seconds of this third quarter. They're down by 11. Love it, Murray the sub. Gave it into Hocking. Off to Hurley. 15 seconds. Hurley goals. Unbelievable things happening here at the moment. Five-point lead. Bombers braining them in the last minute. Great hands from Hocking there, sorry. In close, the modern footballers, the ability to find teammates in tight situations. And that's fantastic. <laughs> Michael Hurley, he's got five goals all of a sudden, Richo. Three in the first quarter, and now he's kicked two in the third. And Lovett Murray's had an impact. The sub with Monfrey's going off. We raised our eyebrows a little bit. And amazingly, six goals, two Fremantle have kicked this quarter. is their best quarter for the year. Brilliant game. James Herb, oh. he doesn't show much emotion. Isn't it an emotional game when you see the supporters and Herb and... Have a look at the crowd giving it to Thompson. He turns around to the Fremantle supporter and gives him the Thompson glare. Bit of sledging. Oh, boy. It's all on here. And James Heard. He's trying to pick it up off the ground. Well, we're having a bit of a joke there as well. <laughs> a little bit of a smile. He's not careful. Bomber will grab that beer out of his hand. And inhale it. It's only mid-strength, I think. And I think Bomber they... entertaining the crowd. Three-quarter time siren. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot go anywhere. This game here is just a five-point margin. Ross Lyon and James Hurd will marshal the troops at three-quarter time. Fremantle, 14-488, lead the Bombers, 13-5, 83.